So what we set up here is I wanted to see if with this new standard OLPF filter, if I needed to do IR uh, filters, or these expensive true NDs. So I wanted to really put this to the test. So what you're looking at right now is just the, uh, you're looking at the clean file. So nothing is in there at all. It's just a clean image that is then color corrected. Now I'm gonna pause it here and now we're moving on to a point three. So I've put in a straight ND point three, uh, putting it down that, that uh, basically is one stop. Now, the usually uh, the Red Dragon and the Red Epic had like a threshold of a 0.9 where you could use straight NDs up to a 0.9 and then you started to see massive IR pollution. So let's see what this test really uh, opens our eyes to. All right, so we have straight ND at a 0.3. Now we have a true ND with a 0.3 and this is red log film. Now you're seeing them side by side. I'll freeze frame that. You're seeing that the straight ND is giving us kind of a more uh, yellow uh, skin tones in the red log film. And uh, you can see in the true ND, you're seeing that he seems a little cleaner uh, in the whites. And uh, it it's, um, seems to be you know, it just seems to be much more of a neutral image, let's say, by using the true NDs. Now let's color correct this file. Now this is a skin tone LUT that I used uh, for Into the Badlands. It was, a, it was a LUT that I created that I felt in uh, these day uh, exterior environments gave a wonderful warmth to the skin tone. So this is straight ND, 0.3, with our skin tone LUT. And now we're going to slide this over to the true ND and I'll freeze that. Now the true ND, I think looks very good. It's obviously much more neutral. It's not as golden, red, yellow. Uh, it's got a slight pinkish quality to the, the whites and the shadows. That's okay. I'm not a big fan of it, uh, but you can immediately see the reason this is happening with the skin tone OLPF, you don't have this. The true NDs work beautifully with the skin tone OLPF. With the standard, the true NDs don't work as well. Uh, so what that is saying to me is Red has really figured it out inside the standard OLPF where you're not needing what this true ND filter is delivering. All right, I'm gonna unfreeze it. And now we're going to go to the Cook uh, 27 at the 0.3 side by side. I'll freeze that and you can see, I mean, I love the, uh, the skin tones from the straight very nicely because uh, that's that skin tone LUT. It has that uh, depth and dimension and a slightly yellow red where the neutral, uh, our true ND is very much more white and I don't know, not as, not as spectacular, let's say. Um, okay, now we're going to go with our 0.6 straight ND and then we go with our true ND. This is all in our red log film at, uh, at 0.6. And there's our side by side. And loving what this is all looking like. Uh, and there's our true ND. I'll freeze that again. Coming up a little magenta. Uh, the whites have a little pink in the whites. I'm not a big magenta fan. So once again, this is just kind of proving the point that... Uh, the standard OLPF is combating the IR pollution beautifully. Okay, we're gonna unfreeze this and we'll go to our side-by-sides and I'll freeze that again. Uh, I'm just really loving the tones, um, not seeing any IR pollution whatsoever on just our use of straight NDs. And, uh, you know, I think there's a little more green 
in the straight NDs, but that's something that could be dialed out beautifully. And there's not that browning purple tones that you usually get when you have IR pollution. So let's unfreeze that and continue to move on to 0.9. Now this is where the threshold of the Dragon and the Epic uh, have, have really the Dragon sensor and the, has, has been. Uh, 0.9, it seems to function very well uh, without any IR pollution. And then it tends to be, uh, it starts to get into those purpley and browns and greens don't look green anymore. They look brown and uh, all that kind of good stuff. So now we've moved to the one, two. So here's our one, two. And there's in red log film and our one, two true ND. And now we see them side by side. I'm going to freeze that. Uh, again, the grays, I, I would have to say that the true NDs look a, more, a little more neutral, uh, but it's not anything that uh, is, again, I'm not seeing any IR pollution on the straight ND side either. So let's uh, unpause that. And there we'll now look at the skin tone LUT with our straight ND. And then we'll slide right to our uh, true ND. And, you know, again, the tones, looking at the side by side, I'm always a yellow red kind of guy. I love yellow red. And that's the one thing I really liked with the, the um, when I use and what you're going to see in this next test uh, that when you use the OLPF, the skin tone OLPF, it has a lot of green in it. So the true NDs kind of helped dial some of that green out and it made the skin uh, very warm and rich. Uh, now with the standard OLPF, it's kind of doing that already. So when you use a, stand, a straight ND like I'm doing on the left-hand side, it's coming up how I would like it to be lensed. I'm not a big fan of what I'm seeing on the right-hand side, which is, uh, you know, more neutrally and pinkish. All right, I'm going to unpause that. Now we're going to go to a 1.5. Straight ND 1.5. This is usually the thing that really you start to see a lot of IR pollution. You start to see a lot of browning in the greens. You're not seeing any of that. Uh, now we go to the true ND, which again is much more neutral. Uh, it doesn't have the richness that the straight ND has. Again, in color correction, I could easily do that. But I think what we're trying to prove here is the true NDs cost $900 to $1,000 for one filter, and straight NDs are two to $300 a piece. So we're seeing a huge savings uh, in regards to just going with the standard OLPF, which has, it seems like, a very nice recipe to combat this IR pollution so you don't have to, do, uh, don't have to deal with all the uh, expensive true ND filters. All right, I'm going to unpause that, and now we're going to go to a 1.8. Uh, this is definitely an area where you'd usually see a ton of IR pollution, and you have in a lot of our tests in the past. And again, uh, you're not seeing any of those things. You're seeing very good tones, rich, warm, inviting skin tones, like is what I want from the skin tone LUT. And as I freeze the side by side, yes, you know, on the 1.8, uh, Cooper is getting a little more greenish yellow uh, overall, but uh, I would have to say, you know, that's something that I could clean up uh, very easily in the uh, color correction process. He looks very neutral with the true NDs, uh, but his brown, uh, you know, his brown shirt is now very gray. Uh, it is not brown, which it was brown. Uh, okay, I'm going to unpause this. And now 
We're going to go to uh, our red log film with the straight, our red log film with our true ND. Now you're seeing the side by side. And now we go right into our 2.1, which, you know, you should be seeing tons of IR pollution. And I think it's very, very balanced. I think the 1.8 in the straight ND, we hit a little hard in the color correction. And some of those overall, we probably hit a little too hard. Uh, you know, too much saturation and, and too uh, yellow red. This, this 2.1 uh, is looking exceptional. I'm loving the skin tone. I'm loving the colors of the grass. I'm loving the, the white uh, of the truck. Uh, all the tones just seem to be perfect, and that is a 2.1 straight ND. Now when I go to, and I'll freeze this, this true ND 2.1, uh, again, very neutral in our settings, very good, you know, looks, looks excellent. Uh, if you're going for more of that neutral and the slight magenta in the shadows. But once again, this is a very expensive filter and uh, all the days of combating uh, IR pollution seem to be extinguished with this, uh, with this standard OLPF filter. Mm -hmm.